the man of the moment, the man of the MCG, the G is his. Take this in. He made our team better. He made cricket better. He was a fan favourite. The great value of Shane was his genius as a bowler, but his willingness to get down and dirty with the rest of us. He was a boy from Black Rock in Melbourne. He had the mullet, he was overweight, so old school 80s Australian. And all of a sudden he makes the Australian cricket side. That's a story in itself. Jones under it, Shane Warne gets his first test wicket. He was the most competitive person that I've ever been around. He was the kind of leader of the pack, of course he was. He was the greatest cricketer of all time. He becomes this superstar. And he's done it. A different world to us. We even walked into his house at times and go, we played the same game, right? He was the personification of the Aussie larrikin. He liked a drink and a fag and a laugh. Shane could do genius, rock star and mate like no one else. Ward at the G for the last time. Listen to the noise. The most perfectly written script because that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for 2005. And if you were going to write your own tombstone, here lies Shane Warne, he... Bold Shane. <laughs> <laughs> The 05 Australian side was formidable, but Michael Vaughan and Duncan Fletcher led us down a path of positivity. There was a feeling in the England side that this is the first time in living memory where we had a chance. All the talk with it, Shane Warne had gone. He couldn't produce what he could produce in the past. I was going through a divorce. I was missing my kids. Off the field, things weren't great for him with bad media, marriage breakups, and drug bans only a couple of years before. And then I think by 2005, that's where the resilience had kicked in with Warney. When I saw people saying, ah, Warney's not what he used to be, Warney's over the hill, Warney should retire. Really? You think that you can say that about Shane Warne? <laughs> You know, that part of my life is stuffing up and not going how I want it to go. So I ain't going to let this side of my life stuff up too. That man there is the key to this game. If he bowls well, England have got no chance. He made it very clear that the Ashes was the most important series to him and he wanted to, to do whatever he could to help Australia win. He was the conductor in his natural habitat. No matter what's going on around him, as soon as he crosses over that boundary, nothing phases him. Four fielders crouching round the batsman. Every ball with him was an event. Every single time you're like, here we go again, here we go again. Come on, buddy. The problem with that. Using the pressure, the stress of the situation as an extra weapon in his armory. Oh. Ah! That's gone. What a good ball that is. He may have not been at the peak of his powers, but you've got to be a brave man to write Shane Warne off at any stage. Ah! She's gone, caught behind. Well, there we go. Shane Warne is well on top. We were defensive and intimidated, and we got rolled over. If there was ever a thought that the Warren mcgrath combination was dwindling, I think inside a few days at the home at cricket, we, we got the answer. They weren't. <laughs> McGrath has picked up another wicket. Four each for McGrath and Warren. The Australians have won this opening test match. The buzz around Lords was amazing. I was pretty focused in that series, probably more focused than I've been in any other series in my life. And I love England, I love the people, I love the atmosphere at the games. 
And it was just a great country to play cricket in. Every summer when he would come over, everything got better. He was the most generous person, but not just generous in what he would give you, but he had time. When you think of everyone that he knew and everything that he did, he always, always made time for people if, that, if you were a mate of his. If you were lucky enough to be in his inner sanctum, um, you felt that love. Didn't matter what I needed, when I needed it, he would be there. His level of, of care was, was just uh, so much more than people knew. He was always there for me all the time, and I think without him I'd never got to any of the positions I've got to in life. Warnie's almost defined my life. His presence in our team made me, uh, you know, a lot better as a, as a cricketer. He had an impact in every single game of cricket he played, even if he didn't get a wicket. So everyone who played with him was a better cricketer because Shane Warne was in that team. What happened at Edgebaston was interesting. I was in the middle that day. All eyes turned to the, the Holly stand. Great news for England, not so much for Glenn McGrath. He went over on his ankle. He's been rushed off in a taxi. In cricket, we're all superstitious and you're always looking for omens. So that was a pretty good omen for us. And then the second one was Ricky Ponting electing to bowl first at the toss, which defied all logic as far as we were concerned. It just didn't make sense. The dressing rooms are very close to Edgebaston. And Warney was kicking off and we could hear it. Gilly and Pano were adamant, no, we're bowling first. And I'm sitting here listening to this absolute garbage. We knew that there was a big fallout in their camp because the King was just shouting and effing and blind. I can't believe we're bloody bowling first. We spotted the opportunity in that. They've handed over potential control of this game to us. Let's have no regrets. Let's go out there and play some shots. So we fought. There are problems here for Australia. It was an extraordinary first day's career. I'm sure that's something, if you ask Ricky, he'll say, yeah, I got that wrong. It was the end of the place. I was hoping that they were mainly going to bowl the, the fast bowlers and we wouldn't have to see much of Shane Warne. But he had that combative streak. Good-natured booing around the ground can mean only one thing. Here he is. A blonde bombshell. His attitude was always, if someone attacks you, you attack them back harder. He just wanted the ball because he wanted to change the game. I didn't want to play any positive shots. I was just in survival mode. We're only expecting to see five more balls from Warren this evening. Pressure's on. Amazing, amazing. This man is incredible. I got in the most almighty tangle of all time. We chuckled because Strauss had played it so appallingly. Typical Strauss, oh, you know, Blase, eh? just put his right foot over, hit the pad, that'll be fine. I did him. I just did him properly because he thought it was a straight one. And you can tell by the way he left it, he thought it was a straight one. It turned far more than I thought it was going to, and uh, the angles were impossible. As soon as it hit the stumps, I was like, it looks, that's going to look really bad. I remember looking around and going, oh, sh He just knew that he had the ability to just whip through any team. He gets given the new ball, he comes on me, breaks the partnership, and it's like Australia are on a roll again. Can England play Shane Warne on this track? They go to the pavilion, leading by 124, but they've got that man to deal with tomorrow. I think he thought, right, I've got no bowling soulmate up the other end, I've got to do more, and he did. Well, there's a surprise. Shane Warne into the attack. Watch the man work. You laugh when Shane Warne came on at times because he's that good. It's the way he could spin the ball as big as he could, but it was the control as well. He could land it on a 20 cent piece, but spin it a metre. How do you teach that? I think he was a freak, there's no doubt about it. 
ultimately he's probably the closest I've come to playing against someone that is possibly not a human being because he could just do remarkable things. Ah! Well, that's pretty convincing. He finishes with six for 46. Best bowling ever by an Australian on this ground. Australia need 282 to go 2 0 up in the series. I think if we'd lost that test match, the series was gone. There's a big shout, he's gone. It's the bucket. Andrew Flintoff is turning this game around. Fantastic delivery, out goes the finger, out goes Gillespie. England on the brink here now, Australia is seven down. We had it in the bag and then somehow we almost lost it. Wayne Warren comes to the crease, plenty of booze as per usual. He stepped up with the bat, almost got Australia over the line. That's a huge hit. Smashes that away through extra cover. Warren's not finished with this cricket match yet. I remember when Harmy got me out with that slower ball. Yeah! Fantastic, brilliant delivery from Harmison. A change of pace, surely it's all over now. My devastation, yes, was getting out in that last over, but it was more, I didn't get too many opportunities to bat with Warney, and we actually had a chance to win the test match together. That is the end of the day's play. Warney took me under his wing. I don't think I would have been the player I was without his help and guidance, and I guess having that confidence in me. Michael was a great influence. He knew how much I was struggling off the field. Sometimes as the senior players, everyone thinks, oh, they're all right. But he was sort of the guy, give me a pat on the back and say, geez, you're outstanding today. And you know, those sort of things mean a lot when you're struggling. He had a real vulnerability under that really confident exterior. He'd come in from a wonderful day that has got our team into a strong, strong position. And he'd say, was that OK? Shane was open to, to talking to people if he felt vulnerable. He would seek reassurances. And I think that's a very, very strong quality for a genius to have to get back on the field and focus in on what we had to do against a ramp in England. Michael knew how hard I was trying. Who was there at the end trying to get Australia over the line? Shane Warne, as he often did. Oh, he's got that through the gap, and that'll go for four. Oh! It's hit wicket, he's kicked his stumps over. It's away for four, past Jones. Agony for England now. I'm really nervous, mate. I must admit, <laughs> edge of my seat, sweaty palms. It is ridiculous up here. Oh. It's in the yeah! end. It's good. What a victory! England have pulled it off. England have won by two runs. What a Test match we have had. There was great relief that we got over the line. Shane Warne, his last test match at this ground, picked up ten wickets and almost won the game with the bat. We did all end up having drinks in our dressing room and he was one of the first to come in and have a drink with us. It became quite apparent quite quickly that there was a little bit of fraction, there was a little bit of fallout starting to happen in the Aussie camp. We felt like we had wrestled the momentum away from them and now it was game on. Hey mate. I'm all right. I missed a good test, didn't I? Oh, yeah. In the studio. Oh, yeah. Okay, Great fun. Well done. Congratulations, anyway. Generally, the mood in the country tells you where your cricket team is, and if they're queuing up outside the gates, it tends to suggest that the country are now starting to believe. Michael, you've won the toss. What are you going to do? Oh, we're going to have a bat. It looks, uh, you know, a good wicket. <laughs> You just got the sense that people were starting to get captivated by this contest. Once well, again, it's a supreme example of timing from Triscotha. What a way to go to 50. All of a sudden, Australia were on the ropes. Wickets for Shane Warne. What a man. 
great moment for the man. Standing ovation. A remarkable performance. I think Warney was probably more loved in the UK than he was in Australia. Like, how can I even say that out loud? I do think we have a very knowledgeable cricket crowd that understand when you're witnessing and you're studying something that you're not going to see forever. One of the things I always remember Shane Warne saying to me is, people don't remember your record, they remember how you played the game. And that's why the English crowd and supporters, they warned him. He, you know, he was the villain, but they, they loved him really. Australia in real bother here. Warney had a great ability to knuckle down when the pressure was at its greatest too. I think it made it easy for him. He knew as a batsman that if I play a few shots here and get away with a few, I can get the opposition to panic. And he loved that situation. There goes Warn. He's got a lot of that. His batting was really hard to captain against. He just sits the ball in stupid areas. He was an attacking batter. He was up for the fight. He was up for the battle. He was dangerous. He made some very useful runs. And Australia have avoided the follow-up. Knocked it over the extra cover region. Worn into the 90s. I didn't tell him when he was still with us, but I wish he'd have got a test entry. Typical shame, one that he didn't get 100. And the way that he got out in the 90s was trying to hit a six. That could be caught, it is. Worn forwards again in the 90s. This time, it's 90, not 99. Many of us mere mortals, we just go, get one, get one, get to three figures, shame one now, let's try and hit a six. Let's try and do it the proper way. One ball left. One wicket needed. This is it. This is the end. This is the climax. Australia have drawn the test match. All the Australians will breathe a huge sigh of relief. These celebrations from Australia for drawing a game. I thought Vaughan was very smart there. He pointed at an Australian team that was celebrating a draw and it showed how far England had come in that Ashes series. I like to think when I walked out onto the field, I went out there to entertain and I went out to win. Walking out to bat in that fourth innings, it was a tailor-made situation for Shane Warne to come and bowl us out. We were flabbergasted that he didn't open the bowling. We got 20 or 30 very quickly. They were 20 or 30 very valuable runs. So I think Ponting missed a trick there. He was chomping at the bit and saying, come on, give me the ball, I'm going to do this. Here comes Shane Warne. He was one of the few spin bowlers I've seen who was able to intimidate batsmen. They didn't need very many, so it was important the first couple of overs to really try and impose myself, give him something to think about. <laughs> Didn't take long, did it? Was the perfect start for Shane Warne. Oh, Shane Warne's got two for naught. Why on earth didn't he have the new ball? He was made for situations like that. Over to you, Shane. You have to keep us in this Ashes series. I remember halfway through and over, Shane Warne just stopping the whole show. And he just went, Straussy, just want to let you know, mate, I'm getting out this ball, OK? This ball I'm getting out. Do you hear that? I remember sort of tapping my bat on the ground, going, OK, what am I going to do here? Because my instinct was, right, OK, I'm going to try and slog sweep you for four then, shove it back at you. Then I thought, no, he wants me to do that. So I'm just going to try and defend it. Then I'm thinking, no, but hold on, I've just got to play the ball. And basically, just that one comment got in my head. <laughs> Out, three wickets down, Shane Warne has shot again. It was phenomenal to watch. The brain behind the skill. The skill was freakish. The brain was even better than the skill. I do remember sitting on that balcony and Strauss was sat next to me and I remember him saying, he's gonna do it. Suddenly, they're 57 for four. 
and everyone <laughs> in England would have been on the edge of their seats. He's got him. Brett Lee has bowled out. Andrew Flintoff, there's a lot of work to do yet for England. You couldn't relax until that final run was scored. Oh. How close is that? He just ultimately believed that his team, with him bowling, could win any situation. Down the track, up in the air. It's up in the air. Casper takes the catch. England still need 13. Unfortunately, so close, but just missed out. Warns Giles. Tucked away to the left side. That's it. England have won the match. For the first time since 1997, England are in front in an Ashes series. I do think if he'd have opened the bowl, then he might not have got those runs. It was one of those series that was just great for the game. It really captured everyone's imagination. And it captured non-cricket lovers' imagination in England. He was proud that cricket was being talked of by people that actually didn't know much about cricket before that series. How's Michael Vaughan feeling this morning? He's a fairly relaxed sort of character. One thing he'll be thinking about, got the possibility of Shane Warne bowling on the last day at the Oval. You know, I had sleepless nights throughout the whole oval week because of the fact that I knew that Shane Warne was in fine form and he could just produce. None of us were sleeping. We knew that we were so close to this unachievable feat of beating Australia. 16 years England have waited for this position. The Australians have held the ashes. No England side have come close. And it didn't start particularly well and Australia got ahead of the game. Ah! Ah! Warne has struck. He was a genius. And when you've got a genius up against you, they can blow you away within a session. We needed someone to grab it with both hands, and I was able to do that in the first innings. Yeah, come on! And that's 101 to Andrew Strauss. Strauss family very, very happy. For me personally, I think the innings that I played for England that I'm most proud of, it kept us in the game. No, is that the catch? It is the catch. It is the breakthrough. Strauss has gone. Six wickets for Shane Warren. A well bowled lad. It was a very, very tense final day. Warren doesn't drop many, but has he just dropped the urn? It was a remarkable moment. I remember thinking, he's just dropped the ashes. If Peterson had got out then, they could have run through us and it would have been all over. And I think we all felt in the crowd, wow, that's incredible. And there you have two warriors, really. Warn again. Nobody out there. Warn wanting to be centre stage. Peterson saying no. Playing against him was always a battle. Warren thought Peterson was going to go for the big shot and he threw it wide outside off stump. Peterson in control of his emotions, just let it go. That's it. The arms are alive. Cover signals Kevin Peterson's first test hundred. Shane Warne is big mate. He respected any player that was willing to look the Aussies in the eye and almost say, If you scored runs against him, no matter who it was, he was the first one up shaking your hand as you walked top. He said, Buddy, you deserve this. Look around and enjoy this feeling. It was wicked. Shane Warne has taken 12 wickets in this match. What an effort. But the fact is, it's not enough to keep the Ashes in Australia. 40 wickets later, we all realised he wasn't over the hill. 
he hadn't even got to the top of it. We wouldn't remember 2005 as fondly as we do if it wasn't for Shane Warne. One of a kind, freak, genius, best player ever played with. We beat a side with the greatest cricketer of all time. I'm a very driven person. I'm very competitive. I'm not going to retire from cricket until we've got the Ashes back. We poked the bear in 05 and the bear was going to come roaring back in 6-7. The conversations away from the game had dried up. Aggression. There was a line drawn in the sand. The noise was just unbelievable. 90-odd thousand people going crazy for their king. It was just one of those moments that you just didn't think could be true. My eyes were just full of tears watching the kids.